Hey, so just a disclaimer, I went through the physics system in Australia and New Zealand, so some of the details about course structures are going to be a little bit different, especially if you're in the US, where grad school can take a long time. The most basic difference between undergrad physics and postgrad physics is the fact that when you're an undergrad, you're doing courses and exams and you're attending lectures, you're intaking information, processing it and then regurgitating it through an exam in sort of a every semester cycle. The big difference about postgraduate physics is that it's a lot more research based. I did a few sort of graduate level uh, physics courses in what's called my honours year and that's sort of a uniquely kind of Australian thing but it means that now in my PhD program I am only doing research. So this is essentially three years of research on one topic of physics. I've got a supervisor and a research group. I no longer have any exams and everything that I'm doing is sort of guided by fundamental research questions. The experiments that I do, any calculations or maths that I do, is, is based around finding out new things, things that haven't been discovered before. And that makes it so much more exciting than undergrad physics, at least for me, because I feel like I'm finally contributing to physics rather than just spending my time learning things that are already known and whilst that's important there's kind of a futility about it that can make you feel a bit down. For that reason I prefer postgrad physics so much more than undergrad but it doesn't really work like that for everyone and getting high grades in undergrad physics doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be a great researcher or great at postgrad. For postgrad, you're really training to become a scientist in the academic sense. You're reading papers, trying to find out what you think is interesting, and finding creative ways to pursue it. The qualities you need to become a good scientist in this sense are things like creativity, determination, and a lot of patience. Some of the experiments, especially, and, and even theoretical work, can require many days and hours of effort before you see any kind of result. Undergrad is more of an instant gratification type thing because you can hand in an assignment, get a good grade and feel good about yourself, you feel that your efforts have been validated. People who got really high grades in undergrad might be good at memorizing information, rote learning things, or just sort of knowing what to say in exam conditions. And those skills aren't at all really useful in postgrad. In undergrad as well, what you do kind of just affects you. You can slack off all semester and then cram for an exam. And while that's not a great tactic, if you can do it and get away with it, it kind of doesn't matter. It's just affecting your grade. But as a postgrad, you've got obligations and responsibilities to your supervisor, to any collaborators, to your research group, you're sort of actually working on something. So there's a lot more expected of you in terms of contributing to others. I can comment on what the major difference is between classic undergrad courses and more advanced work. It's kind of what you would expect. You're going more deep into the same subjects that you learned as an undergrad. So for an example, take electromagnetism. This is something that you probably studied in school and studied in almost every semester or definitely every year of uni. You would have had some iteration of an electromag course, whether you're learning how to calculate the magnetic field around a wire or an array of charges, but you've got quite simple geometry. As a graduate, you will almost certainly be using this horrendous beast, which is Jackson's electrodynamics. And it just goes a lot more in depth into things. Designed so that the problems that you work on, so maybe one problem from Jackson, 
it's going to take you hours and hours and in an exam you might just have two or three questions from Jackson and that would be your whole exam whereas in undergrad you might have like I don't know 10 15 questions from a more basic form of electromag by the time you finish your PhD or even a master's you should be pretty much at the top of whatever respective field you've chosen to study as you go on through the years of studying physics the questions you do are less sort of cookie cutter and more involved they they no longer fit into one nice section of physics but they may stretch over a range of different physics areas as well as a range of different mathematical techniques you need to solve them and I think that's reflective of what problems are really like if you become a scientist it's very rare that you're going to find something that you can solve with only knowledge of one area of physics you need to be thinking really broadly and graduate school is going to help make you that broad thinker